Okay, let's learn a little bit more about type from the assignment in the book. Um, on page 189, they have you open up the start file <coughs> and work with learning more about type. Now, since you're going to be wor working more with type, they have us change our options to have more of the type options come up. And to do that, up here in the top right hand corner of your Photoshop, there's a drop down list that says Essentials. Um, some other options here. There's a one option called typography and it'll have it'll change your workspace to have everything that you can change um, your fonts and your text and, and styles. So that's one thing you definitely want to turn on is right up here in the top right hand corner. Now the first thing they're talking about you know is going and create what we call a clipping mask and a clipping mask basically is an object um, and you're going to fit something above on an additional layer to that object. It'll fit within that shape. And you, a lot of people will see it with type where they'll actually put an image inside a type and they call it a clipping mask. So we'll see that eventually as we're working with that. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure uh, I have my rulers on, which I do. And um, I just go up to view, choose rulers if it's not turned on and then they're going to have us create some roller guides and they're going to just dissect it right down the middle and also right down the um, or you know, in certain uh, elements uh, sizes wise excuse me now my mine ruler happens to be in pixels right now so what I want to do is I'm going to right click on the ruler anywhere on the ruler and I'm going to choose inches okay now I'm going to draw, drag a vertical guide, so I'm going to bring my mouse right on this vertical ruler over on the left hand side. So your arrow has to be right on the ruler guide itself. I'm going to drag it across and I'm going to put it at the 4.25 um, mark. A little tooltip will come up and tell you as well. So I'm going to release. That's going to give us a good idea, uh, a guide to help us know where the center of our image is. Now we're going to add some type and we're going to use the guide to help us to add the type. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my type tool and by default you should have the horizontal type tool selected. If not, make sure it's selected. Now I'm going to make some changes here and the first thing I'm going to do, you can either can go up in your options bar or since we have the character panel open you can also change it there, it does not matter which. Um, first thing I'm going to do is change the font to a Myriad Pro. I'm going to change the font size, I'm going to highlight the number here. Right now they want us to go with 144. Now I'm going to press my enter key to accept it. And then down here, um, we have other options that you can choose. So if you get a chance, uh, we'll look at some of those in a little bit. But definitely check out your character panel. It has some, inform some great information there. I'm going to switch to the paragraph. I'm going to click on Center. So that center aligns the text. Um, back on my character panel, I am going to change what we call the tracking value. Now the tracking value is the space between the characters of the text. Sometimes the font, when you're working with it, the text is too close together. So what we can do is we can adjust it, the spacing between the characters to make it easier to read. So uh, that's called tracking when you go in and apply spacing between all the characters of the word. Kerning is the space between two characters only. So in our character panel, it's this one right, it says VA has a horizontal line below it and I'm going to type in 100 and I'm going to press my enter key to accept. Now with the vertical guide all I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the guide and that's going to help me center my text. You should see a blinking cursor come up in all caps we're going to type in digital. Now if it's off the charts a little bit don't worry we'll move it down. Now I'm going to click on the options bar, I'm going to commit the arrow, the uh, check mark here, commit any current edits. And then of course I am going to move this down. I'm going to use my move tool. Um, I can use my down arrow keys if I wanted to. And that's all I'm doing right now is pressing my down arrow key to move it down.
So I'm just moving to the top of the cover, um, then I'm going to save it. Now eventually, if you want to do it now, um, we can move digital below model on our layers panel and we can just drag it down below the model and you just drag and drop I'm just dragging it down below um, so that way it, the text itself is behind the model itself now I'm going to go and create that clipping mask and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place an image inside my text so I'm going to take this image here that we have Call, it's called the circuit board and this is on page 191 so have it open and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up to window arrange I'm going to put it side by side so I can see both of them so I'm going to do a two up vertical window arrange two up vertical now I'm going to take my move tool and then I'm going to move the circuit board over into the new image. Just drag and drop. Notice my arrow with a little plus means I'm moving it into that image. And when I release, it places it right there. And what you want to do is you want to go in. Eventually, we're going to move it up so it's covering the text. And we're going to scale it a little bit. So let's go ahead. I'm going to maximize this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on 07 start. Actually, you know what? Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta close the circuit board first. So I'm gonna click on the X to close this. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna scale it so it fits the text. So I'm gonna do um, Control T, or you can go up to Edit, Transform, Scale. Either way, it's gonna work. See this bounding box that comes around? So, what we wanna do here is we wanna resize this, and we only want it to make sure it fits the text that we're working with. And then we we'll move it up here. See how it's hiding the text. You can just bring your mouse uh, anywhere in the middle of the image to move it. To resize it, you just take the resizing handles and you just drag inward. Now I have to press my enter key to accept it. The transformation. Anytime you use edit free transform, you have to press your enter key to accept. Now I'm going to come over here and double click on layer one where the text is so I can name it, get in the habit of naming it. I'm going to type in circuit board. I'm going to press my return key or enter key. Now to create that clipping mask, the key here is that your circuit board, the image has to be over top of the text on your layer panel. So it has to be right above it. And then you just go up to layer. Create clipping mask. And this is step nine of page 192. Okay, so see how the image itself fits within the text. Now I know I created a clipping mask. Look at my thumbnail over here on the right hand side of the layers panel. See how there's an arrow and the thumbnail has been indented. That tells me that has been a has created a clipping mask for us. Now I want to make the text stand out a little bit more, so I'm going to click on the text layer. So I'm clicking on the type for the digital, so I have to make sure that's active. I'm going to add a layer style, so I'm going to go down here to click the FX button on my layers panel. I'm going to choose inner shadow. This will open up a dialog box. You can see that the shadows is going inside the text. And then I'm going to make some changes here. I got multiply. I'm going to change the opacity down to 48%. The distance, I'm going to increase that a little bit up to 18. Okay. And then I'm going to change the size to 16. Kind of softens it around the edges. Kind of almost creates it like a 3D look. And then I'm going to click OK. Now anytime you add layer style, again, notice how it adds the effects right over here to right below the type. Uh, any layer that you have, it's going to add it right below it. Okay, save your work. Now it's time to create type on path. 
So we got our clipping mask, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, uh, type, and we're going to actually add it to a path. Now this helps us create a little more of a, a design for a variety of different reasons. Um, so it's not just straight text going across horizontally. We can actually make a path go around a circle area like a golf ball or around the sun. Um, so we once we create the path, then we can actually have type on it. So typically use uh, uh, your pen tool, your shape tool, and then you go in with, with the type tool and you add to that. So we'll see how that works in just a second. So the first thing I want to do is I want to click on the background layer. And then what I want to do is a background layer, I'm going to go to my path pa panel. We actually already have a path here already created. So I'm going to select the path name speech path. This path appears to be coming outside of the, out of the model's mouth. Now I'm going to select my horizontal tool. Now I got to change some things because it, anytime you work with type, it remembers the font size and, and styles that you did last time. So what we want to do is we got to make sure Myriad Pro is selected. I'm going to change the font size to 16. If it's not listed, just type in the number and press your enter key. I'm going to change the tracking to negative 10, not, uh, I'm sorry, not 100, negative 10 because 100 is just going to be too much. And then I'm going to change the color from black to white. So when I click on the black swatch, it opens up the color picker. Just click on the top corner where the white is. OK. Um, then also we want to make it all caps. So actually on your characters panel, instead of you holding down your caps key, uh, or shift key or caps lock key, we do have an all caps option. Those are small caps, all caps. I'm going to click on the two T's here. Now I'm going to move my mouse over. And what you want to see is, is notice that when I move my mouse over the path, I have an I beam with a curved arrow. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click in the middle of the path. I'm going to type in what's new with games. Now you can come back in and for example any text that you have, notice now my mouse has an eye beam and knows there's text there. I'm going to double click on the word games. I'm going to come over to my characters panel. I'm going to change from regular to bold. Now before I move on I need to commit it. Whenever I type in here I'm going to click on the check mark on my options bar. Now I'm going to go back to my layers panel and you can see here that they've added a new layer called what's new with games. And what we're going to do here <coughs> on page 195 and step 8, we're going to duplicate that layer. So how do we duplicate? duplicate? We're going to drag this down to the new layer icon on my layers panel. It creates a duplicate right on top of each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my type tool. Instead of what's new with games, I'm going to say what's new with MP3s. Now, can you see it's hard to read because it's on top of each other, but that's fine. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to click on the check mark on my options bar. That's again all the way on the right hand side. And then I'm going to rotate this some because it's just too hard to read. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to Edit, Free Transform Path. And then what you can do here is you just come outside the resizing handles and you can rotate 
I'm going to rotate it about 30 degrees. You have to be outside the resizing handles. You have to drag clockwise or counterclockwise. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to move it up some. And I'm going to commit. And I can move it afterwards because I don't want it overlapping with the other text. So I'll just take my move tool and I'll press my up arrow key because I did not move it. Now I guess I spelled um, spelled something wrong there with mp3s. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to highlight that. I'm just going to click back at backspace. I'm going to type in number three. There we go. Now I'm going to repeat the steps again. I'm going to duplicate. So I'm going to click on the what's new with games layer. I'm going to drag that down to the new layer icon. Instead of games, we're going to type in phones. So what I'm doing is I'm double clicking on the word games. I'm just replacing with phones. And I'm going to click on the check mark to commit it. Just like before. I'm going to rotate this by going up to edit free transform path. Um, this time I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to try to do minus 30. And I'm going to move this down. Now when you move this down, make sure you do not hold down your mouse on any of the um, square areas. Bring right in the middle of the path and just drag down. So don't come over and try to resize. What will happen is we'll resize and it will look awkward. So you want to come right in the middle and you want to drag down. Come up and click on your check mark and your text has been moved around. So now you have three lines of text. Okay, let's move on. Save your document. Now, text on path makes more straight. You know, makes an interesting um, effect, especially when you have just straight lines. So you can actually go in and and create some curves like that to make it a little more interesting. Now, you can also warp your text as well, and warping is just adding a little more special effects to it. Nothing major uh, in that aspect, but what we're going to do is just kind of get a good idea on how you can warp. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to come down here to what's new with games layer. I'm going to right click on it. I right click on the layer and then there's an option called warp text. So I'm going to click on this and this is going to open up a drop down list or a dialog box. And in this case, I can actually change the styles, and they have different styles you can apply. So this time I'm going to do wave. And what that's going to do is gives me a little more of a curvy shape. And I'm going to change my bend. So I'm going to do about 33 here. And I'll just type it in. Uh, horizontal distortion, I'm going to do my, I'm going to, you can experiment here and eventually end up with minus 23. And vertical distortion, I'm going to do 5. Now look at the word games in there. See how it's kind of distorted there? It's not as, as the, um, appears to kind of float above with that. So when I click OK here, I'm going to do an undo. I'm going to do a Control Z. Watch the word games and notice the difference. So we're just adding a little creativity to our text. Again, all you do here, and then when you repeat it for all the layers, you just right click, warp text, choose wave, change the settings that they have in the book and then click OK.